How's it going everyone? Juan Romero here from Switchwatch. I hope you're all doing really well. Well, with Jordan covering 154 games that you could import from the East with English, we had such positive vibes from that video from you ladies and gentlemen that we thought we would do another ultimate guide. This time we would do our very best to carry out some research with our time capabilities that we have, which is rather limited, but all the games that you love in certain categories. So today we're gonna be looking at the ultimate guide for Metroidvania games. Yes, so all you Metroidvania lovers, we're gonna cover as many games on the Switch platform as possible so get yourselves comfortable because this is going to be another epic long list i've got james and jordan along for the ride as well we're going to cover all the games that are already out on the switch and we'll also highlight some that are coming out in the future too let's get into it Three Thousandth Duel is, in my opinion, a must-play Metroidvania as it borrows quite a bit from Dark Souls. It is grisly looking but, you know, I quite like the art style, full of action with large bosses. The Wise One DLC also adds 150 extra regions to explore and 60 new kinds of monsters. I think this one, you know, with other games in the genre taking the limelight has gone under the radar a little. It is brutal in its difficulty and progression is slow but that's kind of how we like it, right? Here you use Karma to level up as the herded hero. Combat feels decent and platforming is what you'd be used to in most games of this ilk, but it is engaging and entertaining. The Jellos is one of those games, it's not talked about that much, but it has a fantastic retro style game. It's more of an open world to explore too, and a game that slowly reveals itself as you get new abilities and equipment, you get to see more of this world filled with deadly encounters through its many quests. I bought this one physically for my collection, I enjoyed it from start to finish and really loved those chip tunes. Actually making this list has brought back memories of how much I actually like this one, so very much recommend it if you haven't got it in your collection. Hey folks, how's it going? It's James here. Now first up for me, Akatori is coming in 2022 and promises a magical world that an ancient god has designed that he wants to destroy it and all of that story that we're uh, very familiar with, but Mako will save the day. So here is a little bit of the trailer to see if this one gets you excited. Some of you may recall this looks familiar as it was previously going to be called Destic, which to be honest I prefer, but there you go. In Hours Awakening, we have a Metroidvania where you get to solve puzzles and free the land of Alwa. Love that word. Action is taken care of with your magic staff and of course we have platforming and bosses too. It wouldn't be a Metroidvania without that platforming and bosses. And if you like anything 8-bit, then this is for you. And it will remind you of the days playing on the NES. This one is definitely charming, so keep on the lookout for it. On our previous Metroidvania list where we talked about the 25 best Metroidvania games, many people asked why we did not add a robot named Fight. And the truth is, we had not played it at the time, and well, this is a roguelike set in a labyrinth focused on exploration and item collection, so we believe it should make the list. Furthermore, everything here is procedural, meaning each run is unique, with over 100 items and 60 menacing enemies to take on. For those who love a good co-op, it even offers a mode available for that. Axiom Verge is a fantastic Metroidvania game. This one is essential. In this you play as a scientist. It is a mysterious journey, but the game shines in its amazing level design and spectacular boss fights. There are over 60 items and power-ups to collect throughout the game. Learning what weapons and setups to use for puzzles and epic battles is all a part of the fun. The developer Thomas Happ did an amazing job. It can be a little bit challenging at times, but it never feels unfair. Truly an amazing game from start to finish. Now, the sequel to Thomas Happ's acclaimed retro-style game is due out in the first half of this year. So hopefully, not too long. We hope this one comes out then. It's one of my personal, most anticipated games. How is it going to improve on the very first game, and what new adventure will this bring? If it matches the first, then we will be on to a winner for sure. And from the trailer, it already looks very promising, and another Metroidvania that will surely be added to many people's lists. Bloodstained, a ritual of the night, is a game that James Jordan and I did our first three-way. 
It sounds rather rude, but if you want to check out that review, click on that top right hand corner bit and you'll be able to uh, check that out. Now, we enjoyed it, but we were rather annoyed with the performance issues and slowdown. It didn't take away too much from the enjoyment, but when you could play it on another platform, it really was highlighted. And well, you could have had a cleaner experience elsewhere. That's the truth. And it was something fans were not happy with at all. While there has been updates and it does run a lot smoother, it's still not quite perfect, still, we really like this Metroidvania in this gothic horror side-scrolling game with RPG elements. It's also set in England. Of course, a fighting through a castle is always good in my book, and with lots of loots to collect and minions to defeat, this one is a game that in this guide particularly stands out. Blasphemous is a brilliant game. It's dark and twisted and we just love the style created by a Spanish studio, The Game Kitchen. It has brutal action and tough platforming at times and yes, you are going to probably die quite a bit. If you love hack and slash and like the idea of taking control of a knight and taking on some tough bosses, this is going to be right up your street. This one is highly recommended. Blaster Master Zero is cool, it has 2D platforming and it is also a top-down shooter, which some may argue sets it apart from the core genre. Well, this is not a list for the core genre, but one that includes many games which have elements of the genre, and this is certainly one of those. Exploration is rewarded. The Sophia 3 name always reminds me of my niece, as it's her name, except for the 3 part, and whatever you choose to do feels tight and fun. One we definitely recommend trying if you have not done so already. Book Brown Brigade is a fine Metroidvania style game featuring many historical figures banding together to unlock new abilities. This flew under the radar when it released digitally not too long ago. We reviewed it and gave it a nice solid recommendation. It's one that many people didn't check out so be sure to do so and see if it's up your alley or not. Carry On is a horror game that I also reviewed on the channel recently. I very much enjoyed the different take on the genre where you're a monster and have to escape the facility which has kept you locked up. On your way, you grow larger by consuming humans. Sure, it's pretty hideous, but it's so compelling. Humans will have weapons, but they're no match for your ever-expanding tentacles. It's a pretty short game, but I really, really enjoyed this one. Highly recommend it, and if you can get the physical, it's rather beautiful, I have to say. Now, I love Cave Story Plus. It's one of the first games that I actually imported from America from the wonderful guys at Nicarlis for my Nintendo Switch. Now, this little gem can be as hard as balls, especially near the end, but I love how fluid the gameplay is, how tough it can be, but also how rewarding it can be too. Cave Story Plus has been around for ages, but for good reason. It's a fantastic game, really top notch, and if you haven't got it yet, make sure you add it to your collection. Well worthwhile being on this ultimate guide. In Chasm, you are a new recruit sent on your first mission where you will get to prove your worth as a knight. As you explore the mining town, you realize it's a ghost town, and that would be because everyone has been kidnapped by the supernatural, so that would certainly make sense. Of course, deadly battles await against cunning monsters, with each room hand-designed in one-of-a-kind world map, and the Chasm stitches all of the rooms together. It is certainly a good game. Curse of the Sea Rats is due at some point this year and it's said to be an epic Ratoidvania, so of course it makes this list. Now I don't know anyone who loves rats, but if you like pirates and Metroidvanias then this is certainly one to keep an eye on. Dandara is a 2D Metroidvania platformer with all of the regular expectations from tracking back and unlocking new areas to taking on large bosses and getting stronger as you progress. What really makes the game stand out is its unique control system. Dandara cannot move around the world freely, rather you aim her at platforms which she can jump to using the left and right sticks to aim and hitting A to make the leap. Think Puzzle Bobble. The story of Dandara and the character herself are loosely based on Dandara dos Palmares, an Afro-Brazilian freedom fighter from the 17th century who fought to protect slaves in a liberated settlement of Brazil. Much is written about her husband Zumbi, but very little is known about Dandara herself and it's great to see this character brought to life in a game. This is a wonderful and rich game from the gameplay and cool 2D graphics to the story and brilliant soundtrack. Now I would say Dead Cells is not a game that comes along very often. It's one of the only games that we rated a 10 out of 10 on the Nintendo Switch and it's one of my favorite indies. So if you haven't checked out our review and want to understand why we gave it a 10 out of 10, 
then make sure you check it out. Not strictly a Metroidvania though, this is a more of a Roguevania shall we say, but it was inspired by Metroidvania games. It's fantastic in every way. Motion Twin, the developers continue to support it with downloadable content. It's got great visuals, epic combat, and the roguelite that if you're not a fan of those types of games, then I implore you to try this one because I do believe it will change your mind. It is that good. Dust is one of those that you kind of love or hate because this Metroidvania has a lot of backtracking, quite a bit. However, we enjoyed it quite a lot. Dust comes across a sentient sword, the Blade of Ara, and the Guardian Fidget. We love having to power up our hero and there is lots of that here. Combat is brawler-like, using your sword and magic using fidget. This is a game we recommend if you're into the genre. Ender Lily's Quietus of the Knights is set to release this year in the second half and is described as a fantasy metroidvania. You play as Lily, set in a very dark looking world. The environment certainly looks great and we cannot wait to see what this has to offer later on this year. Feudal Alloy is a metroidvania that is rough around the edges and really odd. You play as a goldfish controlling a robotic body in an odd landscape full of robots in a medieval setting. I reviewed this one when it came out and I did enjoy it. There are nice RPG elements thrown in and the puzzles are excellent. It's not perfect by any means and it wouldn't probably be many people's favourites but it's definitely an above average game. I loved Former 8 when I reviewed it for Switch Watch. There's not much action going on but it's a really nice way to spend an afternoon exploring the environments with a floating little probe whose task it is to explore this potentially dangerous alien world. I really like the visuals, it's simple, but it's one of those games that you're just really going to enjoy. It's short and sweet. Gato Roboto, just look at this game. No apologies for its look at all. Gato Roboto has more than its visuals. This is an awesome little Metroidvania here about a cat in a cozy armored mech. Our feline friend can even venture out of the mech to explore tight tunnels. Of course, with cats being curious and all, exploration is just a natural consequence. Great little game published by Devolver Digital, and I highly recommend you check out my review as to why I loved it. Ghost 1.0 is a futuristic metroidvania game with tight controls and some nice mechanics. The game's difficulty ramps up really well throughout the game and the tough thing for this game is just that the market for metroidvania games is crowded with some amazing games. But this is certainly no slouch and while the visuals are a little bit generic, it is the gameplay here which you'll be coming back for. Wakamele is a game that needs no introduction. It's a magical and creative title that fully embraces the lucha libre wrestling style and mystical folklore of Mexico. This smashed together with some humor and we have a fantastic game wrapping it all together. The Super Turbo Championship Edition on the Switch brings a lot of little enhancements as well as new areas to be explored in what is already a great game. Part two is more of the same, which is by no means a bad thing, but if you've never played this before, then part one and two are fantastic, so either one is a great game in its own right. We love this Metroidvania action platformer, lots of bright colors and a wonderful musical score with gameplay to match. Just a great game that everyone should own. Hollow Knight is an absolute masterpiece. I was surprised at how cheap it was when it first launched on the Nintendo Switch. Couldn't believe it because it's one of those games that I gave a 10 out of 10 to, had great value for the amount that you get here. Now, it's one of the best Metroidvania games I have played. The story is told really subtly, encouraging you to connect the dots with your imagination. It's one that wants you to discover more. The soundtrack by Christopher Larkin is atmospheric, a joy on the ears. And so are the little detailed sound effects. Like any good Metroidvania, there are plenty of areas to discover and each one feels really unique from the jungle underground complete with the swirling leaves to the lake where it always rains. Everything looks absolutely gorgeous. Each character has little animations that give them a sense of personality. And the bosses look awesome too. You would never suspect that this game was made predominantly by just three people from Team Cherry. Such is the level of detail going on here. Controls are tight and combat is engaging. Everything here I think is superb, a game that you cannot miss, which brings us nicely to that sequel. Hollow Knight Silk Song, we expect more of the same goodness from this Hollow Knight sequel, and this will surely be a game that most people who love Metroidvania games will buy on day one. I know I certainly will be. 
We expect this to be another fantastic game and we cannot wait till it drops later on this year. Iconoclast is an action platformer with lots of puzzles and a surprisingly interesting story. Made by just one person, actually, it is one of those titles that is better than the sum of its parts. The visuals are decent, the audio is decent, the gameplay is really appealing, but together, you know, it's a bit magical. A really fun experience. Check out my review for more info on it. Kunai is a little Metroidvania gem of that, there is no doubt. In our review, we noted that, you know, it didn't have the greatest visuals, but we praised it because we lost ourselves in its world for seven hours, slicing and dicing bad robots and also shooting them to bits for good measure. The controls are nice and tight and felt a joy to play from start to finish. It has a superb soundtrack and I just wish it was a little bit longer. Now, if you like to collect games physically, then at the time I put this video together, there's still stock over at Limited Run Games. La Mulana 1 and 2, just buy both of these because the amount of depth in this games is incredible. They're also very difficult. The challenge is real. Environmental traps will get you, enemies will annoy you, but with persistence comes reward. And that is how I felt when playing these games. There are puzzles which are brain teasers too, so it has a bit of everything, but if you don't like tough games, then stay clear. I think Mabel and the Wood flew under the radar and sadly, it's probably because while it looked like a, you know, quite a beautiful game, it was rather frustrating to navigate its environments. The premise of shapeshifting into bosses is novel, but once you killed them, the game overall just failed to live up to its promise. Still, if you're looking for something a bit different, you certainly can do much worse than this. In The Messenger, as a demon army besieges his village, a young ninja ventures through a cursed world to deliver a scroll paramount to his clan's survival. What begins as a classic action platformer soon unravels into an expansive time-travelling adventure full of thrills, surprises and humour. The second half of the game changes it up into a metroidvania. The Messenger is one of the strongest indie titles on the Switch full stop. I love its retro style and chiptunes, plus its branching path to discover. Mind Seas is more of an action platformer. It certainly has metroidvania elements, which sees it makes the list. We were rather looking forward to this and while it didn't quite hit the mark, it was still rather satisfying. We liked its sci-fi setting and those lovely hand-drawn 16-bit pixel visuals. Combat was decent too, so if it ever goes on sale, one to certainly keep in mind. Momodora is quite simply a great little metrovania. In fact, I reviewed it on the channel, so check it out if you want more detail. It has lovely visuals and soundtrack, and while the gameplay is rather simplistic, it's still a journey worth taking. Didn't really like the black bars at the side of the screen though, so be aware of that. Minoria is another fantastic Metroidvania, the sequel more or less to Momodoro in all but name. And for those of you that are fans of Momodoro, you'll be familiar with aspects of the gameplay here. You get to parry, dodge, and there's a variety of different spells, lots of exploration. A really, really good game. If you haven't got this, add it to your collection. What a wonderful game this is where you get to choose your familiar and become a monster keeper whilst you're out saving the monster sanctuary. We love this as you get to use the powers of the monsters you collect whilst exploring this metroidvania inspired world. The beauty here is that finding different monsters will give you the ability to open up more of the world. Throw in some 3v3 tactical combat and we have us a mix of genres that we love. As a heads up, if you're an Xbox owner then you can enjoy this if you have Game Pass Ultimate. In fact, that's how I played this one. And you can check out a bunch of other great indies on Game Pass over at our sister channel, Games Expanse. Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom is a great game, colourful, modern, hand-drawn artwork with incredible music. There are challenging enemies to defeat in this 15-hour adventure and when we reviewed this one, there was nothing we could say other than buy it. It plays and runs smoothly on the Switch too and is highly recommended by us. Check out James's review. Narita Boy will be available on the 30th of March and I am massively looking forward to it. A console created in the 80s called the Narita One with its flagship title called Narita Boy and somehow the digital realm connects with reality and an adventure is born. A massive digital kingdom to explore, bosses to defeat and many foes all with great looking visuals accompanied by synth music which I love. A day one purchase. What can we say about The Mummy Demastered? An excellent action-packed adventure against zombies, vermin, insects, and all sorts to keep you occupied. The retro visuals are cool, the soundtrack awesome, loads of weapons and bosses, and when the developer is way forward, 
you know you're getting quality. Now, when Microsoft announced that Ori and the Blind Forest was coming to the Nintendo Switch, we were rather excited here at Switch Watch. It's one of the best Metroidvania games on this list, no doubt about that, along with Hollow Knight. It's utterly gorgeous with its visuals. The music captivates you from the very moment you begin. You have a character which is an absolute joy to control with the tight controls, a journey through exploration and platforming with enemies to defeat and new powers to uncover. It's one definitely not to miss, which brings us onto the sequel, which is equally excellent, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Utterly brilliant. More of the same, but everything's been slightly improved to the point where you just think it cannot get much better than this. Game runs absolutely beautifully on Switch 2, and if you have a Series X, by the way, Give it a go to take advantage of that 4K and 120 frames per second. Magnificent to say the least. But the Switch does an unbelievable job and the game that we are delighted to be able to take on the move. Make sure you get both of these games. Our Boy is a game which took 10 years to make and you can see that love has gone into every pixel of this wonderful game about a mutant owl named Otis who struggles to live up to expectations of owlhood. This is a story-driven metroidvania which ignores gravity as you can fly. There are some nice dungeons to explore and challenging bosses to beat in this great adventure. We love the art, gameplay and music and it's a really touching story that we can't recommend enough. We're having all types of metroidvanias now. Soulsvania, Ratvania, and here, Romancelvania. Whatever next, Pinballvania? Well, actually, that is coming up. Romancelvania Bachelor's Curse is coming in late 2021 and looks hilarious from the trailer, although I'm not entirely sure the visuals will be to everyone's taste, including mine. This is a genre mashup of Metroidvania where you get to romance your way across Transylvania, encountering monsters, craft weapons, and learn magic. You can also build your castle and enjoy the romance by taking ladies out on outlandish dates. A bit of everything then, and something we look forward to checking out. Or if you want a hard game, then Salt and Sanctuary is often described as a 2D Dark Souls, and in many ways, it's very fair indeed. If you took Dark Souls' challenging combat and style and combined it with 2D platforming with a Castlevania-style map, then Salt and Sanctuary is what you would probably end up with. Unlike many of the other titles in this list, the game does not have a deep, engaging story. With very little fanfare, you find yourself in this bleak world struggling to survive and progress with a focus on excellent combat. And I love that, I have to say. Like its inspiration, one wrong move though means death. And that's not for everybody. You will die a lot. One that I definitely recommend if you want a bit of a challenge. Depending on how strict you are with a Metroidvania term, some will say this should not be in and others will say it fits a lot of the criteria. For me, it is in and that is because of the main map is interconnected. This is a DS game ported to the Switch and is enhanced. If you love Shantai, then this is a must. The third in the Shantai series, Shantai and the Pirate Curse is the biggest one yet and another absolute must if you love the series. And way forward, show us all the way forward when it comes to developing these wonderful games. The gameplay is as tight as ever, fun to play, loads to find and explore and bosses to kill with multiple endings and a quality soundtrack and great visuals. Shanta Half Genie Hero, this is the first full HD adventure and when a crime wave sweeps through the sequin land, it is time for Shanta to save the day. That is what this is all about. Playing this is fun, engaging and brilliant to enjoy. There is a new relic system for you to unlock powers and customize the move set, and there is a nice big world to explore too. There are some really good big boss battles as well, and this is just a beautiful, well-polished game at a great price point. Shantae and the Seven Sirens is another epic adventure in the series. You get to traverse an expansive interconnected world above and below the sea, adds fusion magic and of course you can change instantly between those creature forms. You can collect and power up monster cards and there's some beautiful animated TV style cutscenes. If you want a really fantastic Metroidvania then this is one that you need to add to your collection as well as all the other Shantae adventures to be fair. We really like Shinsake Into the Depths, a game from Capcom and one that we reviewed on the channel. So if you want more information, check it out. But it is an underwater adventure, a world teeming with life and you have to maintain your suit's pressure 
as you explore the ruins of past civilizations. A really, really good adventure, this one, and we rated this quite highly. So if you haven't got this one in your collection, I know I keep saying it, but add it to your collection. It is a very good game, and if you're looking for that next underwater adventure, then look no further than this. With wonderful exploration and upgrading loop where you played as a lovable robot named Rusty. This time around in Steam World Dig 2 you play as his friend Dorothy and you're searching for your buddy. Image and Form kept much of the same formula here. It's still a great adventure about digging in the subterranean world, exploring and using the loot to upgrade yourself, becoming stronger and able to delve further, but what it really does well is in adding enough new features to keep it fresh. One example is that this time the underground is not randomized, instead it's a sprawling world that feels tighter because it's been crafted more carefully. This time around the RPG elements have been ratched up as well, the puzzles have become better and the platforming is tight up, still set in a gorgeous steampunk world. This is a joy to play and a must have for almost anyone. Super Epic The Entertainment War is a humorous action metroidvania game which stars a raccoon and a llama. They're about to save society from a corporation which is evil as you do. Regnant Corporation has enslaved the population with their addictive free video games. It's not sound too bad. Here you get to explore an office, or should I say castle that looks like an office, in which you'll need to do your thing to take care of enemies and save video games forever. Very close to my heart. Metroidvania games have certainly come a long way and evolved a lot since the early days. Superland is a Metroidvania in 3D, which is something rather different. It's a fresh take on exploration, puzzles and adventure. A fantastic game and one we recommend if you want something different from all the other 2D adventures on this list. Super Daryl Deluxe certainly has a lot going for it. It's not an art style that everybody will love, but I certainly liked it. And it's a game that has over 40 skills and abilities to learn. There's a lot of gameplay too. It took me around 22 hours to complete, but there is a lot of backtracking in this game. So if you're not a fan of that, then this probably isn't for you. But then again, which Metroidvanias out there don't have backtracking in some form? Most of them do. I really liked it, the uh, comedy elements here in the story again not to everybody's taste but i enjoyed it one that is a little bit different on this list sundered is fantastic with its hand-drawn visuals and an awesome 15-hour adventure with the option to play co-op with up to four players you take on bosses and a vast array of enemies i reviewed this personally on the channel and gave it high praise everything about it was very good tight mechanics and gameplay that would not let you go till you completed it highly recommended we enjoy Time Spinner here at Switch Watch and think out of all the many choices on your list, this should certainly be one of them. Here you get to travel back in time in this beautifully story-driven adventure. Lunace has her family murdered in front of her and the ancient Time Spinner is destroyed. She is stranded with no hope of return, but it is up to you now to take revenge. We love the visuals, gameplay and overall package here and it was good in all the right places. A Metroidvania well worth the cash. Soho Lunar Nights, this came out at the end of 2020, a heavy emphasis on exploration and action which actually also dropped on the Xbox Game Pass recently, which reminds me, if you've not checked out our other channel which covers PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles, then check out Games Expanse. We quite like this one, so worth a look for sure, especially if you're a fan of all things Toho. We quite like this one as it's probably not as well known and is a rather decent time. It's not groundbreaking by any means but certainly worth your while. Your ship is crash landed and of course the place is hostile. You must gather clues, gain powers and discover artifacts to fix your ship and get out of this dodgy situation. We like how you can choose three abilities during your adventure and depending on your decisions you can enjoy this interactive adventure in eight different ways. So it's a little bit of different choice. The music also adapts to these choices which is quite a novel different thing that you don't see very often. Do you love video games? Check. Are you a fan of sci-fi movies? Check. Novice RPG player? Well, kinda check. All of a sudden Daniel is teleported into a castle where he thinks he is hallucinating. He decides to ride this out until the end which is not easy seeing as a dark shadow tries to kill our protagonist here in Unepic. So it is up to you to master the castle and we have to say it's an adventure well worth being involved in. We wish PlayAsia still had that double pack of Unepic and Ghost 1.0.
Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap, this is a cult classic with its gorgeous hand-drawn animations and orchestrated soundtrack. You can't ask for more with its blend of exploration, adventure and action. We love it, and if you're a fan of this genre, then this one has to be in your collection. Wonder Boy Asher in Monster World, this is the same again here, they've done another great job with this one and it's a sensual purchase. Yoku's Island Express is a pinballvania, so of course it has to make this list. Yoku is who you control as a pint-sized postman protagonist of Yoku Island Express, and there's a unique blend of pinball mechanics and platforming in this open world. It looks really beautiful, and I must say, when I reviewed this game for Switch Watch, it was a complete surprise. I enjoyed it from start to finish. Beautiful visuals, lovely sound, and it's one that I wholeheartedly recommend. Wow, if you're still watching this video, you're an absolute legend. Leave me a heart emoji in the comment section down below so I know who you are. And also, let us know if we missed any Metroidvania games from this list that should have been here. We'd love to know which games they are, and our community would too. It's more than possible the amount of research we put in, but it is possible that we missed one or two, or maybe more than that. If so, we apologize for that. Thank you to all of our members that help us financially. You have no idea how much it helps put these videos together. So a massive thank you to you, and also all of our subscribers. We really appreciate it. You have no idea how valuable you are. We want to get to 100,000 subscribers. If you love this ultimate list, and it's your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you don't miss another one of our videos. I want to thank James and Jordan for helping to put this one together. It was a really good time. If you want to see another one like this, make sure you let us know. Take care everybody and we'll see you again on the next one.